welcome to Outdoors and Country Living. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make some homemade hot sauce. First of all, we're going to need a various variety of hot peppers. We have some hot banana peppers, some jalapeno peppers, and some habanero peppers. Whatever kind of hot pepper you like, just have a variety, chop them up. Let's go. All right, so in this large stock pot, I have various hot peppers just sliced up. They're not de-seeded or anything. We're gonna be using salt, white vinegar, and minced garlic. The recipe will be in the description below, so make sure you check that out. On top of our sliced peppers, I'm adding the salt and the minced garlic. And then we will be adding the vinegar. And then we're going to heat this up and start cooking the peppers until they are soft. I'm going to put a lid on it so the steam can kind of help soften those peppers a little bit faster. Be very careful when you remove the lid because this is peppers and vinegar, hot peppers and vinegar, and it can smack you in the face pretty good. So keep your head back. I'm just stirring the peppers here as they're cooking, checking to see how soft they are. Again, we're just gonna cook the peppers until they're soft. And that time frame is going to vary depending on how many peppers you have. I have a lot of peppers in this pot, so it's going to take me a little bit longer than it probably would you if you're doing a smaller batch. I'm just going to put the lid back on. They're not quite ready yet and let it cook a little bit longer. Looks like they are softening up quite nicely. The rings that they were in are starting to come apart. So the next step is I'm going to be using an, an immersion blender to puree this. If you don't have an immersion blender, you could use a regular blender or a food processor. So I'm going to puree this, seeds and all, get it to a nice smooth consistency, and then we will be straining out the pepper seeds with a mesh wire strainer. So once I get it all blended up, we will be straining this with a mesh strainer to get rid of the seeds, and we'll just be left with the hot sauce at that point. Now, depending on how thick or thin you want your hot sauce, you can add more white vinegar until you get it to the consistency that you like. And that's gonna vary for all of us. I'm trying to get an in-between, not too thin and not too thick kind of sauce. Here, I'm just stirring it to kind of test the consistency. It's still a little too thick for us, so I'm going to just add some more vinegar and I'm simply just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring it. Just add some, stir it in. And the thinner it is, the easier it will be to strain out the seeds. But you also don't want it too thin because you can't take the vinegar back out once you add it. Just kind of testing it here again. And I think a little bit more vinegar will suit our fancy. So that's the nice thing about the hot sauce. You can kind of play around with it. 
once we get the seeds out, we'll be able to see if we need to add any more, but I, I'm trying to get the right consistency before I strain it, which it doesn't really matter, but. So here's the mesh strainer over another big pot. I'm just, I'm gonna take a spoon here and move the seeds around so it's easier to get the sauce to go through the strainer. If you don't have a strainer like this, you could use cheesecloth somehow or another device that you might have an idea for. But I typically use the mesh strainer. Seems to work really well. And then periodically I just empty the seeds into a garbage bucket and then I will take those outside and discard them. a lot of seeds in those peppers. So if you're using a blender or a food processor to puree your peppers, just be really careful transferring them. It's a hot, you know, combination of the peppers and the vinegar alone, so use caution. Here I have all of the hot sauce strained. I'm again just testing the consistency here to make sure it's where we want it to be. Not too thick, not too thin. I think we're good. I will be canning some of this today in a water bath canner. I'm going to be using some half pint or jelly jars. Fill them about half inch to a quarter inch from the top of the jar. Wipe your rims. I'm just using a damp paper towel here. I want to make sure all of the, there's no residue on top of the jars so your lids seal nicely. Once I get all of the jars prepared, I will be water bath canning them for 10 minutes. You want to do, if you're doing half pint jars, it's 10 minutes. If you're doing a full pint jar of hot sauce, it's also 10 minutes. So just so you know that. This hot sauce can also be stored in the refrigerator for up to almost a year. There's so much vinegar in it, it won't go bad as long as it's refrigerated. So we're keeping a little bit in the refrigerator in a big bottle for use now. And then I'm canning these for shelf stability for long term. So put on your lids and your bands fingertip tight. And these are gonna process in a water bath canner for 10 minutes. If your elevation or altitude is greater than a thousand feet, make sure you check your trusted canning guide for proper processing times. All right, they're in the water bath canner. The water is an inch or two over the top of each jar. We're just gonna turn the burner on high, put the lid on and wait for it to come to a boil. Once it's at a rolling boil, that's when we will start our timer for 10 minutes. Here it's at a rolling boil. So I have started my timer for 10 minutes. I'm removing the lid. It's been 10 minutes, so I'm taking the lid off. I've turned the heat off. We're gonna let the jars sit in here for about five minutes until we remove them. This helps them to start cooling down and helps prevent siphoning as well. Typically with hot sauce, you don't have a lot of siphoning, but just to err on the safe side, we're going to continue to wait like we do everything else. So in about five minutes, I'll get these out.
right, I'm just removing them onto this cloth placemat. I'm going to start hearing them ping and seal pretty quickly after you get them out. These are going to sit here for about 12 to 24 hours or until they're fully cooled and all the lids are sealed. Then I will remove the bands, clean up the jars if necessary, and label them and get them ready to go downstairs to our storage area. Well, that's how you make homemade hot sauce. And as my father-in-law commented after I gave him some to trial. He said, you have created the perfect hot sauce. I had some with my chicken today and it sure was good. It has good spicy flavor, but still not so hot that it's overpowering. And it is thin enough that it will still pour while remaining thick enough that it stays on your food. Thank you. So that's a pretty good compliment, I do believe. He is a hot sauce connoisseur, so if anyone would know what a good hot sauce is, it's my father-in-law. So I hope you can make yourself some hot sauce now. We sure do like it here at our place, and it is fairly easy to make, as long as you have a good supply of hot peppers. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, and God bless you. We will see you later.